Hi and welcome to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky and today my guest has gone from a wheelchair to a millionaire and I say this, this is one of the first things I noticed when I visited the website. Um, my guest today is Ron Douglas. How are you, Ron? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Oh, mate, I'm fantastic, and I'm ex- uh, you know just very pleased and fortunate to have you on the show today. Uh, again, this is the the thing that caught my eye the most, and it's probably a good place to start. From wheelchair to millionaire. That's a I've not seen it sort of put that way before. Tell me about <laughs> what ha- what happened there. Well, I um, at 18, I was uh, street racing, and I uh, you know, crashed my car and uh, broke my back and was paralyzed from the waist down. Wow. And um, I uh, had a little heart to heart with myself, and uh, luckily, you know, at eighteen, you, you you tend to rebound a little bit, and, mm-hmm. and um, so recovery was okay, and I was able to a year later be able to uh, recover in full, and and got a full, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the doctor you know signed off on everything, saying that I was fully recovered, and wow. so I was able to. Go back into the workforce and and get a job and mm-hmm. and uh, so I did that and um, that job took me to a, a little town called Kennedy, Texas, mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. and uh, that's where I met my first entrepreneur and um, the first entrepreneur I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> wow! Uh, I just I, I wonder though. I mean, I always thought when when somebody became paralyzed, that was it. There was no turning back. Apparently, I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. So, the, so what had happened is, uh, when I, when I crushed the vertebrae in my back, mm-hmm. it, uh, you know, I, I broke the bones and, and the, uh, and the, the, the vertebrae and, and what happened is it caused a bunch of swelling and that swelling is what pinched the nerves and paralyzed me. Right. Um, and, and so as the, as the swelling went down mm-hmm. and the, and the, the bones just slowly kind of went back into place mm. and the start and started to heal themselves. Uh, you know, they, of course they had me in a brace to help, you know, get the bones back into place and all that stuff. And, and as it, as the swelling went down, I slowly started getting the feeling back in my legs. Yep. Yep. So fortunate, unfortunate, but fortunate in many respects. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Look, uh, for everyone who's listening, uh, Ron is, uh, not only an entrepreneur, he's a coach, he's an author, mentor, he's a speaker. He is also a husband and father of eight children. Um, yep. it's just an amazing backstory. The more and more that I read, uh, his bio, he's had his own, uh, discovery channel called blue collar backer. Tell me a bit more about that. Uh, yeah. So we, um, we did a, a, a our first season. It was called uh, Blue Collar Backers, and basically, it was uh, you know I went to small businesses and I was able to help help a bunch of people. And every episode, I helped a, a new business and, and got them uh, on their feet. Mm-hmm. Um, and I uh, had a lot of fun doing it. It just took a lot of time, a lot of time away from uh, uh, the projects I wanted to do, and mm-hmm. so. They asked me to do five more seasons, and I, I just kind of I thought about it, and I, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but I, I went ahead and I turned it down. Wow. So, well, because you know where you yeah. want to go, I guess. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, fam- yeah. family is important for you. Yes, yes, mm. and uh, it, it took, you know, it took thirty. I think it was thirty six weeks. Was it thirty six weeks to film uh, season one? And it was just oh, man, just it was just a one lot. just one season. Wow, yeah, that's a lot of time to invest, isn't it? It was. It was a lot of time. So, so that that kind of changed my tune about the whole uh, TV thing. And I think that what got to me the most was, I, you know, I like to just go in and get stuff done. Yeah. And you know, having to walk through a door and shake somebody's hand six different times just get the the right angles and all that. I uh. just, uh, <laughs> yeah, that drove, that drove me nuts. <laughs> you seem to be like the you know a salt of the earth type of guy, and you know that would frustrate me. I have to say, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, what yeah, I mean? So, that would totally frustrate me. <laughs> <laughs> you've uh, again for everyone who's listening. Um, Ron's been on the new in the New York Times, MSNBC, CBS, and Fox. Um, wow, you're all over the place. How do you how do you manage your day? How do you do you stay on on track? And what's happening with Ron at the moment? Well, it's uh, you know actually what's happening at the moment is kind of a big life change for me. I uh, after I turned down the the five seasons on Discovery, mm-hmm. um, I, 
I, I was invited to speak at a couple of different uh, places, and one of them was a college, and and uh, you know, I, I spoke at the school, and man, I really, I just, I, I really had a passion for that, and I really enjoyed helping these, uh, you know, these young guys and yep. young gals that uh, have never done it before, and mm-hmm. and getting, you know, getting that first start, that initial start, and and um, and so I. I realized that that's really what I wanted to do. So at the time, I looked at my portfolio, and I had I had over twenty businesses I still owned, and um, and so I just I just did a big sale. I just started selling businesses and started selling off, selling off, and I sold solar businesses. I sold my barber shops. I sold um, uh, had a restaurant. Sold that. I sold. Uh, uh, the uh, self reliance expos, I, I, a couple of different expos I had. I had a Colorado Outdoor Expo. I sold all of those, sold everything, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and um, I told my wife, I said, now's the time to do it. So we went and bought 50 acres uh, in the in the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado. Beautiful. And we bought, yeah, it's a little 50 acre ranch. It's got um, uh, you know a nice home on it, and, and um, it's got a bunch of little cabins on it. So. We we bought that place and just been renovating it and uh, I, I I sold all the businesses and now I'm focusing I'm, I'm coming here and building this place up so that I can focus 100 percent on just coaching and helping people. So what will you be offering retreats and things like that? Yeah, so we'll be doing retreats here, business retreats here. I'll still go out and do them o- over the world. I mean, I still go out and I speak and I fly out and do speaking engagements. So I'll, I'll still do that. But, yeah, eventually I'd like to do a lot of business retreats here uh, because we have the, the six cabins and so people can just come in and stay. Yeah, that's an amazing thing, um, you know, because at the end of the day, my future business is all about, you know, helping people make the right decisions. It's about mindset. It's about, you know, um, you know, respecting process. A lot of the times, you know, people are looking for this quick fix thing. And I guess I just want to touch on that a little bit because there's a few few major points that we're going to cover off today, if you don't mind, Ron, is the, yeah. du- the doubling, tripling or even quadrupling your revenue in, in 12 months and uh, overcoming challenges and self-reliance and the final one, which is the, how to reach goals and achieve the success that you're after i mean this I, i'm a big believer in respecting process now you've also got this uh book that you've authored six figures in six months uh is this uh like a, a process oriented type of of book yeah well yeah the book's a really quick read um and it's uh matter of fact it was one of those things it was a challenge to myself i told myself i'm, I'm gonna write a book and get it up on there, and I'm, it's not going to have any fluff. It's going to be just straight to the point. Yep. And, uh, and I literally wrote that book and had it on Amazon in 24 hours. Wow. <laughs> there you go. For anybody who's listening, there's a nugget of gold there. You don't have to spend months, years, or even decades writing books. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> inside this book, it talks about, uh, you know, real-world scenarios and um, you know, there's obviously a lot of good reviews on the book. Um, tell us the the nuts and bolts of it. Um, the book is basically about. I do three. I, I believe it's three different businesses I, I do in the book, and basically, it's. Uh, I, I I use those as examples of how you can do. Uh, each one of those businesses uh, was doing six figures in six months. They went from nothing to six figures, and mm-hmm. so. Uh, you know, I believe one of them was an online example. I did uh, one that was a, a real estate deal, and then I, th- I think I did um, uh, another one that was, uh, oh, man, I think it was landscaping, you mm-hmm. know, kind of a general contractor. So, so yeah, I mean, they're the, you know, these are just past people that I've coached, and, and, uh, and so I just took their examples and put them in the book. Uh, but basically, the bottom line is, is – if you're going to jump in your car mm-hmm. and without any experience and just jump in the car and drive to, I don't know, uh, over there, Sydney or wherever. wherever, yeah, wherever you're going to drive, I mean, you know, the first thing you usually do is look at a map and you kind of look at your destination and where you're going and you kind of figure out the road you're going to go. You don't just You don't just jump in the car and go, yeah, I think it's. You know, over there east, and I'm just going to start <laughs> driving that way. Somewhere. You know? yeah. I mean, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people start their business that way. They, you know, there's no end goal in mind. And so what I do is I, I actually teach people to focus on the end goal and then work your way backwards. So focus on what your business looks like in six months and you're making six figures. Mm-hmm. 
what does that look like? How many employees do you need to have in order to be generating that kind of revenue? How you know how many trucks do you need to be running? How many you know what's your staff look like? What's your what's your overhead looks like? And all that stuff, and and then I and then we work it backwards. Right. <clears throat> yep, yep. Okay. You know, in month, in month six, if you need four employees, then you know, in month five, you need to have three employees already trained, and then month four, you need to have you know two employees trained, um, and then. You know, and so I basically you start writing this blueprint, and, and and in the book I give you an example, and I show you how to write this blueprint, a six month blueprint, so that you can actually, you know, pretty much draw a map from start to finish on how to get from zero to six figures. So uh, we normally write up a post and we share it with uh, our audience and syndicate it across iTunes and YouTube and actually on the My Future Business site. I'll put up a link to your book. I believe I can find it on Amazon. Yep. 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 Excellent. No worries. And uh, we'll also add a lot of uh, other detail about how you can contact Ron. Now, Ron, I really want to go to the next level with you and talk about the the doubling and tripling or even quadrupling revenue. How does how does that all come about? How does somebody do that? And can somebody do that from absolutely uh, no money down? You know, a complete beginner. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's the same as uh, six figures in six months. So you work, you work the plan mm -hmm. um, the same the same way. Okay. So say you're making a hundred thousand right now, and you want to be making two hundred thousand. So you want to double your business in the next six months. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it, it, it's the exact same model. You you start in six months. What it, what is it you're going to be doing in six months? Uh, how many trucks do you need? How many employees do you need? Yeah. It's the exact same. Exactly same. Exact right. Same okay. Model. Yep. I got it. So. <laughs> Um, so essentially, this this book is a very good start point. It's essentially the blueprint, isn't it? I mean, you have to get this book to really get where this was will be going if you want to uh, get a get started. Um, I also yeah, well, and and, uh, and, and uh, just just so you guys know, yep. what I've decided to go ahead and do since I bought my ranch here is. You can you can go and buy the book on Amazon, mm -hmm. or you can go to rondouglas.me, rondouglas.me, <clears throat> and sign up there, and I'll actually give you a copy of the book for free. Right. And um, and and also when you sign up, uh, there'll be a video series, and I'm, I'm working on the video series right now. Like literally, I will have it done probably in the next 24 hours. Yep. Um, and, and that video series is basically me drawing out a six-month blueprint for you. So you can see an example. You can read the book, understand what I'm talking about, and then watch videos of me showing you how to do it and then implement that into your own plan. Wow, that's a fantastic resource. I know a lot of uh, people uh, learn differently. You know, some people like to read. Some people like to listen to podcasts. Others like video. So, uh, yeah, congratulations on that. I'm sure there's a fair bit of work that goes into that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it's like the book, right? Yep. I, I go. I decided to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to get it done in 24 hours, and it's going to be up on, on online. And it's going to just. I'm not, it's it's just, not going to be a bunch of bluff. It's just going to get it done. It, it's uh, the no frills approach to to learning how to run your own business. So, I we we often talk about um, you know psychology of business and you know, uh, self-belief and the way you think about the world around you, how it impacts your ability to either be successful or not. Um, with your previous um, challenges, let's call them for lack of better ways to put it, where were, were you Were you always in a positive mind frame, even in your darkest moments when you had this wheelchair incident? And how's that journey been for you in terms of, you know, your self-belief and, and all those sorts of things? <clears throat> well, good question. Thanks. Um, the... No, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. uh, I was not always in a positive mindset, um, but I was always in a. I always had a no quit attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I might have been negative, I might have been down on myself. Mm -hmm. I was always, I always kind of got pissed off. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know when I was younger, you know, you're just full of piss and vinegar, right? And they just, say, uh, just and, angry. Uh, and say, and so, yeah, and so I was just mad, but I would channel that anger to make me do something to get it done, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I think, I, you know, when when I got, you know, when I, when I started having to do the, the therapy and learning to walk again, 
I would I would get mad and I would get in there and I would just get it done and I would push myself and push myself and push myself and not quit mm-hmm. and uh, but it was the not quitting part you know everything else was just you know I didn't have to do it that angry but mm-hmm. you know and and as I've gotten older I've learned it you know I don't need to be all angry and mad all the time but <laughs> the uh, but but the but the no quitting uh, you know Napoleon Hill I'm not sure if you're familiar with Napoleon yes, Hill but am. Uh, uh, so Napoleon Hill says, you know, that you can succeed 90% of the time, 90%, if you just don't quit. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that, those are better odds than anything out there. I mean, that's that's a better grade than I ever got in school. I mean, 90%, pretty <laughs> doggone good. So, um, you know, if, if I can, you know, if, if I can not quit – and have a 90% chance of achieving my goal, hey, I'm going to go for it. Of course, of course. I um, You often sort of sit back and you think, you're only defeated if you let yourself be defeated. I mean, um, the ability just to stop and think, well, this day wasn't great, but tomorrow I get another shot at it. As long as I've got two feet and a heartbeat, I've got another chance. That's essentially how you, you live, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, the one thing there, there's two sayings that I always use, and and people know me for these two sayings is is uh, nothing to it but to do it. Yep, yep. Um, when I said when I sat down to write my book, same thing. I was like, well, nothing to it but to do it. I mean, yeah. My my dream was to write the book in a cabin, you know, up, you know, overlooking a lake and being up in the mountains and and being by myself and. Yeah, no, yeah. it didn't work that way. I, I decided to do it on a, I think it was a Wednesday or an afternoon or something, and <laughs> and uh, I, I was sitting at home and I had, you know, a couple of dirty dishes sitting next to me from from lunch, you know, and <laughs> and my, my, you know, a you know pile of books on my desk, and I just moved everything out of the way and just got to work and just said, I'm just going to do it, it's, and so it just flowed, uh, you know. It, yeah, and so it's just again, it's nothing to it but to do it is my first thing, and then the other one is the, you know the fastest way to help yourself is to help somebody else. Wow, that's a, that uh, reminds me of Jim Rohn. He, uh, you know, you can get everything you want if you help everybody get more people get what they want. You know, so. uh, and that's exactly right. Same, yeah, same thing. Yep. You, you seem like a very outwardly focused individual, and you know, I think a lot of people miss this um, in terms of how to um, serve others. They often it appears to me, at least I might be wrong, but have this very inwards what's in it for me type of behavior. And and then they wonder in turn why their businesses aren't as successful as what they were planning for was because their focus was more, um, you know, on self than serving others. Um, when you're yeah. working with clients, um, how do you, how do you help them if they're, if they're that way and they're focusing on themselves? Do you just have a conversation? Do you, what do you do? Um, yeah, we well, I have a conversation with them, and, and I show them that that it does work. I mean, uh, there there are several times, and, and and listen, we've all been there where we're so frustrated with our business, and we're looking at the bolt the board, or that we're staring at the computer, and we're you know, things aren't working the way we want it to work, and mm-hmm. you know, and, and you're ready to pull your hair out, and and I just go, well, today's one of those days, just things ain't working, and so I, I get up from my computer and I get I walk out and. <laughs> I go. I go find somebody to go help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whether whether it's cutting my neighbor's grass or helping my helping one of my sons with one of their projects mm-hmm. or whatever it is, I just go out and I I just decide to go do something else. I just like, well, this ain't working today. I got that means I got to go. It, it, it's telling me that I'm too caught up into it and I need to go and help somebody with something else right now. Just, and just so, step and back. Look, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I remember the first time I did this, I was, I just, and, and and it doesn't have to be like going and doing something crazy. I mean, I I remember the first time I did this, I walked outside and I I played with my son. I I went out there and played marbles with him mm-hmm. in the in the dirt, and so we were playing marbles, and I don't know, an hour went by or something like that, and uh, uh, and then and then it all clicked. You know, as I was playing marbles, and I just about finished, I went, "Oh, that's what I needed to do." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, dead gummit!" And then so, 
you know, I, I finished up with my son, ran back inside, go up on the computer, went to this website, boom, oh, there's my answer, there's my solution, and boom, 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 and then it all worked you out. Know, it's like an epiphany, you know, it's oftentimes, and there, again, I think there's a hidden gem uh, uncovering itself right there is the that that moment when you do walk away, you go and do something that you enjoy, might be gardening, helping others, playing with your children, then all of a sudden you have that moment of clarity and you go, well, was, the answer was always there. I was just so close to the problem that you need to step away. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You got you to gotta step away. You got to step away. And, and and like I said, the fastest way to do that is just go help somebody. We we do a lot of where we do, um, you know, we go and we deliver food to people that are in need. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I put so many miles on my truck doing that. And, and, we you know, we'll load it down and put all kinds of food in there and we just go out and deliver it. And, and as I'm driving, it never, it never fails. I'm driving and I always... <laughs> come up with a solution to a problem that I've been thinking about in the back of my head. I suspect you have a pen and paper or some way to capture those uh, those thoughts when oh, you yeah. have them. <laughs> all the time, all the time. All yep. the time. I, I, write it, I quickly write it down and then I go home and, and handle it. You've got a book full of uh, upcoming projects, I'm sure. So uh, what is actually on the cards for you? Uh, you've got something uh, in terms of uh, speaking um, coming up at all or...? Yeah, I, well, I just like I said, I'm I'm just focusing on the speaking schedule. I mean, it's coming up Christmas. I, I really kind of decided to work on the homestead and kind of take the rest of the year off, mm-hmm. um, and so I'm just kind of doing that and and just kind of uh, you know because we got the home and the and the, the cabins. Uh, I think I already told you about that. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, we're just gonna work, we're working on those and uh, just getting them renovated yep. and. You know the, the the property that we're buying, you know, has kind of been neglected for the last decade or so. So it, it's going to take a lot of work to get yeah. it back up to back up to snuff. But you know, I just decided, you know, you know, we, with Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's coming up, let's yep. just take the rest of the year off and just spend time as a family and just go do this. That's a ama- that's so, a, that's a really amazing spot to be in to be able to just do that. You know, a lot of people don't have that uh, position, I guess. Yeah, 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 you're, you're right, yeah. Yeah, no, so... Yeah, uh, it, yeah, doing that. Sorry, uh, there's a bit of lag here. I apologise for, for cutting in there. I, um, I, as, a, as a father and family man myself, do you uh, transfer your knowledge uh, to your children? Are they interested in, in what you do? And how does that all pan out for you? Uh, it's like everybody else, you know. <laughs> my, it, it's, it's amazing, it, you got you got some kids that'll listen to you, and you know some kids that just look at you like you don't know nothing. You know? I just, <laughs> I'm still young enough to know everything, Dad. What are you on about? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, and I tell him that all the time. I told my son that I was like, man, I wish I was still young enough to know everything like you. <laughs> That's gold, absolute gold. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, uh, for everybody who's listening now, Ron uh, has a, a vast and varied background, and I really want to learn a little bit more about your time as a prison guard. How was that? Okay. Yeah. Well, so after I I was able to walk again and, and I got my uh, you know health you know thing signed off, uh, I applied to be a prison guard in the state of Texas and uh, and was able to do that. And so by nineteen, I was a prison guard. <clears throat> by twenty, I was on the riot team. And, um, Causing and then riots. by 20, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, a, yeah, it was an interesting deal. So being on the riot team was just, a yeah, that was an interesting time. Um, and then, um, uh, and then I actually got to work death row, um, in Huntsville, Texas. And that, uh, that was a eye opener, mm-hmm. you know, to, to, to see people in a different perspective, different, uh, circumstances right. um, they're, they're coming to a, a somewhat of a closure i suspect in terms of or does it open up their their perspective on life and they are just grateful for the time they have left how does that all work what what have what have you experienced would you be able to share something? Well, it, it, yeah it's just like anybody else i mean it's just a little bit every one of them's a little bit different mm-hmm. some of them are mad some of them are happy some of them don't care mm-hmm. some of them you know it, it was never their fault, you know. Ninety well, percent of them, it was never them, you know. And so, <laughs> yep. You know, and but but you know, the perspective of watching somebody go from, you know, it's one thing when they're sitting in their cell on death row, mm-hmm. but then it was it was a whole nother attitude when you're actually walking them to the death chamber, you know, where they were going to be put down, mm-hmm. um, and think. Things got, and to watch that transformation, 
when people know that life is coming to an end and you know literally they're minutes away from uh closure uh, yeah. Never, yeah 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 and and so what a what a unique experience to see that and to know and and, and for me to realize wow that life really is you know very short mm. you know everybody the one thing they all had in common is they all wanted they all wish they spent more time with their family or their wives or their kids or whatever and and they all regretted they always they always wanted more time mm-hmm. and, and so I've always been very um, uh, what's the word? I've been very, uh, very respectful of my time, mm. and 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 that's why I don't waste time. When when it when it was come time to write the book, for instance, like I, I just do it. You know, let's yeah. just. Yeah. You know, time is just something we can't get back. Quit wasting it. Yeah, we we have uh, some reviews on on your uh, Amazon page, and it talks about um, how they enjoyed your no BS approach and. It seems to me, you know, you know, it aligns well with this whole notion of you can, for example, get more money, but you can't get more time. And so, with you know the view on money, you get you must get to a certain point. You say, well, that was the target, but I think there's a bigger picture for Ron. You know, there's a bigger meaning of life for Ron, and this has obviously come to fruition with, you know, the good work that you're doing and you know, uh, volunteering, giving out food. Uh, you know, a lot of people just don't ever get to that point. So, uh, can you tell me a little bit about this pen profit? I don't know what that is. What's that about? Uh, and the pen profit is basically it, it's you. It's it's teaching people how to um, journal properly. All right. uh, and, and a pen a pen profit is somebody who can write their future. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so I'll touch on that just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but basically, the premise is. I, I journal differently than everybody else that I know. Um, a lot of people, you know, they write, you know, blah, 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 I did this yesterday, and this is what I achieved, and this is what, you know, you know, this is what's going on in my life. Well, I, I don't focus on that. I, I focus on what I, I write about what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. I don't write about what I've done. Mm-hmm. And so I focus on the future. And so there's something very unique about putting pen to paper. And I, and I don't mean like typing your journal. I mean, actually like writing it out. An actual, longhand. An actual pen. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and everybody thinks I got this fancy journal and they all laugh at me when they, when they see my journal, it's just a spiral bound 99 cent, you know, lined paper notebook. Mm-hmm. It's nothing fancy. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I do is I sit there and I journal about what I'm going to do. So today, this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Boom, and I start and I start writing it. And when, <clears throat> basically, it's kind of a it's a fancy to do list, so to speak. Um, but what happens is something happens when you put pen to paper, and it unlocks your mind. So as you're writing your challenges today, I'm, I've got to figure out this problem, and this is the problem, and this you know, and th- this is what's it's holding up my business because of this. And you know, let's just say. Um, uh, let's say you've got a software problem, you're trying to develop a website, um, and you've got a software problem, and so I start writing about that. I need to find a person <clears throat> that specializes in this, this, and this. They need to have these skill sets. And then I, I, and I literally write it out. Who am I looking for? And this is, what, this is the person I am looking for. And, um, and, I, and I write that out. And, and what happens is your mind literally unlocks your problems mm. and and as you as you do that and sometimes like like for instance um i wrote oh this has been several years ago but i wrote um about how i wanted to start the self-reliance expo um and teach people how to become more self-reliant right mm-hmm. and so and i said well, i'm gonna i'd like to start an expo i would like to maybe do you know maybe do three or four of these a year i would like to reach you know, maybe a hundred thousand people. Um, you know, and how am I going to do that? And so I, I would start journaling about that, right? And so every day I journal a little bit about it, and then by the fifth day, something just unlocked in me, and I just before you realize it, in a blink of an eye, I had written like fifteen pages, and it was the entire blueprint of how I was going to do it, 
who the vendors were that were going to be there, who I needed to call, what kind of sponsors I wanted. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. It, it was a full blueprint of how the business looked. Wow. And 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 five years later, I actually pulled that pulled that journal out, and I had six. I think it was six of the eight sponsors that I had listed were actually sponsors of my expo at that time. Wow, that's incredible. And so I like, I like literally wrote my own future. Yeah, wow, and that's <laughs> I I resonate with that because I'm very much a forward thinker, and that's why I call the business my future business because you know it's not about what we do today; it's about essentially what we think about, we can bring about, and you you epitomise that. So this is this is real. This is actually something that the power of the pen brings to the table. Absolutely, I journal every day. Every I day. never miss a day. Yeah, I think um, you know if you write down a hundred ideas and you know a third of them come to come to fruition, well, you know there's again another good reason for for you as a listener to pick up your pen and get that ninety nine cent uh, book, <laughs> just a blank yeah. blank book, and just start writing down bullet points. So do you have uh, like long sentences, or you just bullet point these things every day? Um, well, uh, sometimes I bullet point, but a lot of times I just start journaling about my problem or what I uh, – not necessarily my problem, but what I want to do today. What do I need to achieve today? Mm -hmm. and, and so I make it a habit at the end of the day when I leave my desk, I open the drawer – I pull out my journal and I throw it on top of my keyboard, mm -hmm. and then I sh and I leave my office, so that when I come in in the morning, I'm not tempted to just log into my computer and, and my journal is sitting on top of my keyboard. And so I have to journal before I turn on my computer um, what I'm going to achieve today, so that you your, your emails don't depict your day, your your you know your messages don't you know don't define your day for you. You define your day. And so, uh, you know, I sit down and I journal. And but it usually starts out with, okay, so today this is what you know I would like to achieve, mm -hmm. blank. And in order to do that, I need to find this, this, and this. You know, like for instance, today, I mean, uh, my journaling is a little bit different than in the business. You know, when I'm doing business because I'm, I'm working on the on the ranch here. So yep. today I wrote, today I would like to put in a brand new fireplace into my place, but I want it to be a, an efficient fireplace. And I explained why, you know, why the, the fireplace needed to be efficient, what I was looking for, and blah, blah, blah. And as I journaled about it, um, I, I was journaling about it, and I said, I need to find somebody who specializes in this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll be doggone if you didn't show up today about 1 o'clock. Um <laughs> It, it was a guy from the local church here, and he goes, yeah, he goes, oh, yeah, there's a fireplace guy, and I said, but I already journaled about it, so I knew exactly what I was looking for, so wow. I, didn't, I didn't just, it wasn't willy-nilly, right? So he goes, he goes, uh, yeah, there's a guy, that, he specializes in a fireplace, and I said, well, yeah, but is it this kind of fireplace that I need to be a certain amount of efficiency in this and that? He goes, oh, yeah, that's the one he works on. This is, I was like, oh, perfect. This reminds yeah. me of, uh, you know, the, the, the mind's ability to use um, what's, I think it's called reticular activation. You, you know, you, you, you put your, your mind to buying a certain car, for example, and then all of a sudden you, your reticular activation system inside your brain actually sees all these cars all of a sudden, whereas beforehand. So in, in many respects, this is the same sort of thing. You pick up that, that pen and you write down your journal and might I say – just that, just that slight difference of putting your um, your pad to the right of your keyboard as opposed to putting it actually on top of the keys. I reckon that's going to make a big difference for a lot of people because, uh, again, you've got the keyboard right in front of you. It's just it seems natural just to start typing, doesn't it? You have to put it. It, it is. It's so natural. I used to put it to the side, mm. and and I would like literally grab my keyboard and push my notebook off. You know, <laughs> push it away from me a little bit. <laughs> and, and, and you know, I'm just I'm no, I'm normal like everybody else. Yes. So I, yeah, so, so I would just grab it and I just I kind of nudge my my notebook out of the way a little bit and I'd start <laughs> I'd start keying. And so I I made it a habit of putting it right on the keyboard. You talk a lot about it. It's it you know it seems to me that like everyone you've had to go through this uh, process of self development and and discipline and uh, you know that uh, persistence I guess you'd say. Absolutely. I mean, every, every, I the one thing that 
probably drives me nuts the most is when people come in and they just think that you know that I've hung the moon or whatever. You know, yeah. oh, you've done all these things. You're so incredible and blah blah. No, I'm not. I'm just like everybody else. Yeah. The only difference is I just do it, and I and you can too. Like literally tomorrow, mm -hmm. you can achieve everything you write down. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, you you can start writing it tomorrow and start achieving it tomorrow, just like me. I mean, there's no difference. I mean, and I still make mistakes like everybody else. And, you know, I, I don't know if this 50-acre ranch is going to work out. I don't know if selling all my businesses was a smart thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if turning down five seasons of, you know, a chance to be on Discovery Channel for five seasons was a smart move. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't. I, yeah. I just got to go with what, what works for me. You you're, you're not going to die, die wondering, are you? No. You, you, nope. you follow your nose. You follow your heart. You do what your intuition tells you. And that's a big thing. I think a lot of people don't trust themselves enough. They lack, lack a lot of confidence in the world. I see that in a lot of people that I, that I speak with, not necessarily directly on the show, but just offline to people who are struggling. They want to do something new with their life. They, but uh, they're held back through, uh, of, uh, through fear. How do you deal with fear of things? You just push through, don't you? Yeah, I don't fear nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have no fear of anything. I mean, and the reason why, and I'll, and I'll tell you this, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, if I'm stepping next to a cliff, yeah, I'm scared I'm going to fall off. That's not what I mean. No, but, I understand. But, but, but when it comes to business or making a decision, the, the only fear I have is not making a decision. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I, and, and I say that, oh man, I, I, I mean this Oh, how do I word this? The, the the one thing that people, the biggest mistake I see people make all the time mm -hmm. is they're scared to fail. They're scared they're going to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't tell people to hurry up and fail, and I don't tell people that you're going to fail. I mean, trust me, out of the 40-some-odd businesses that I've started, I have about 500 domain names. And I, it was funny because I was just going through this with my wife last night, and I was looking through all the domain names I had <laughs> uh, that, I, that I purchased, you know, because oh, I'd get this business idea, you know, and I'd oh, yeah, I should start this kind of business, and, and I'd go and I'd buy the domain name, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, and now a year later, I'm looking at a domain going, man, that was a stupid idea. <laughs> Delete, you know, and so I'm not renewing it. You know, I, you know I, there's a whole – we went through, and there was probably about – out of those 500 domains I own, I think I – I unsubscribed, so they're not auto renewing. Yeah. I, I, I unsubscribed like I don't know, 170 of them. Wow. It was incredible. I was like, "Oh, that was a stupid idea. That was a, that's a dumb name. Can you believe I even thought that was a good name?" You know? and so, yeah, and so, yeah. I mean, we all do it. It's okay. It's uh, that's all part of it. I mean, you know, the the, the key is though that is to get out there and do. And do. I mean, if you're not doing, you're not you're not going anywhere. Yeah. If you're not doing, you're not doing anything. So Right. Look, Ron, um, <laughs> it's just amazing how time flies when you're having really good calls. And um, I just wanted to uh, wrap up the call today by um, offering uh, you the opportunity to share where people can find you um, across okay. the various networks, wherever you are. So tell us a little bit about how people can find you. I think the best way is um, rondouglas.me, rondouglas.me, mm -hmm. um, or you can go to Facebook forward slash Ron Douglas. And on there, um, on rondouglas.me, you'll be able to sign up. I'll give you the copy of the book. And then you'll also get an invitation to a closed um, Facebook group that we have. Mm -hmm. And and I'm going to send you an email uh, right after this meeting, and you'll you'll get an invitation yourself. Thank you. And I'd like to see you in that Facebook group because I tell you what you'll see in there is something we just talked about. It I, I literally just did this video yesterday. Mm -hmm. Was um, there was a painting? There was a painting on my wall in my office for years that I always loved. It was a beautiful painting, and uh, I, uh, I, I I set that picture up and I show that picture. And then I drop the picture, and that painting is is is, is a picture of a, of a of a mountain range. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful mountain range. Mm -hmm. And and if you set if you take that picture down, that is now my backyard. My my literally my out my back 
the yard is almost exactly Ex exactly the, the same profile the lot yep. wow yeah so and 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 the, and the artist that that drew that or and that painted that uh painting has never been here never been to this place never been to this valley um and it's almost identical wow. um, the horizon <laughs> That's a little, well, it's almost a little bit scary, isn't it, how that comes about? It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it, it is. So uh, you'll be able to see that picture. Like, I literally just posted that video yesterday, but it's in our private uh, Facebook group, and anybody's welcome to join. It doesn't cost anything. And, again, the fastest way to help somebody else is to help or help yourself is to help somebody else. And so that's what I do with that Facebook group is I just go in there and I just help people and I answer their questions and I help them. Uh, try to get their businesses going. You're a wonderful man, Ron, and I definitely look forward to seeing your email. I've set up a post for everybody to visit. Uh, uh, below the post, you will find all of the details that Ron uh, wants you to have. Again, thank you for being on the show today, Ron, and please stay in touch. I'd love to invite you back sometime. And yeah, we will talk again soon. That sounds great, bud. You take care. <laughs>